powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. Tropical storm Harvey's flooding rains are starting to end, but the danger is far from over. I'm Don Champion in Houston with the latest coming up. And closer to home at 630, red flag warnings prompt firefighting officials to take extra steps to prepare for wildfires. What's being done as temperatures soar, humidity levels plunge, and winds are predicted. Good morning, Southwest Montana. Thanks for joining us on this Wednesday. Kenneth Webb will be along with our forecast in a moment. Our top story, North Korean state television showed stills and video this morning of what it claims was Pyongyang's missile launch over Japan that ended up in the northern Pacific Ocean. Now, earlier, the Korean uh, Central News Agency said leader Kim Jong-un had expressed great satisfaction with the launch, calling it, quote, a meaningful prelude, end quote, to containing Guam, the U.S. Pacific Territory, and military hub. Agency reported uh, Kim is saying the country needs to conduct more ballistic missile tests to the Pacific to advance the capabilities of its strategic force. United and once again, all 15 members of the Security Council have spoken in unison. All of us. The United States, Japan, China, Russia, Europeans, Africans, South Americans. We are all together. And what are we saying? We are all denouncing North Korea's outrageous act against another UN member state, Japan. We are all demanding North Korea stop any future missile launches. We are all demanding North Korea abandon its nuclear weapons. By the way, uh, Ambassador Haley says North Korea has violated every single Security Council resolution and violated international law. President Trump says all options are on the table for the U.S. to respond to North Korea. Well, the confirmed death toll from Harvey now stands at eight, including Houston police officer who drowned inside his vehicle trapped by floodwaters. Record-breaking rainfall that flooded Houston is winding down, but the trouble is far from over. Harvey moving back on shore. A flash flood emergency is in effect for Beaumont and Port Arthur, Texas this morning. CBS's Don Champion is in Houston with the latest. Good morning. Some people here in the Houston area finally got a glimpse of the sun before it set last night. As rescues of stranded residents continue, shelters like the one behind me are getting overwhelmed. Harvey slammed the Beaumont area in southeastern Texas overnight with lightning, wind, and what the National Weather Service called catastrophic and life-threatening flooding. Everybody needs to start kind of going in that survival mode and start trying to get yourself to higher elevations. Some residents are trapped and in desperate need of help. In the city of Port Arthur, rescue teams are fighting a fire in floodwaters. CBS affiliate KFDM posted this photo and says the fire spread to several houses and the neighborhood is being evacuated. County officials had to shut down rescue operations at nightfall and the local sheriff says resources can't get through because of the high water. We've face many storms down there, but it's, this is the worst I've seen. In Houston, where the rain is finally starting to subside, the danger is far from over. More than 13,000 rescues have happened since Harvey hit. Here, U.S. Customs and Border Protection agents saved a person caught in fast-moving water. And here, two people stuck atop their mostly submerged truck got a lifeline from a small inflatable boat. Where to house the displaced has become the latest issue. The convention center downtown, the first shelter to open, has been running at double capacity. To help with the overflow, the NRG Center Convention Hall, next to where the Texans football team plays, opened its doors Tuesday evening. It becomes the largest rescue center able to hold 10,000 people. As conditions improve here, more out-of-state help is arriving, including search and rescue teams from Florida and California. In Houston this morning, I'm Don Champion. Now back to you. Now exactly 12 years since Hurricane Katrina, Harvey may now dump up to eight inches of rain on New Orleans. City engineers there are working on repairing several water pumps that failed after a storm earlier this month dropped about that amount of rain. So we're going to continue to follow that. Meteorologist uh, Kenneth Webb joins us now. The amount of rainfall that we're talking about there is just, it's hard for me to fathom as we uh, head to your graphic in this. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, let's go right to the graphic and show you exactly how much rainfall actually fell in a four-day period 
in Houston, 49.32 inches. That's three and a half times the amount of our annual rainfall for Bozeman, 3.8 times for the annual amount of rain for Butte. And so that's really record setting rainfall for the Houston area. There it is right now on the radar. Uh, it did make landfall at Cameron, Louisiana this morning, and it is projected to move towards the north and east and will start to weaken as the time progresses throughout the day today. Moving a little bit back home, we do have some isolated showers and sprinkles this morning into eastern Madison County, northern Gallatin County, just at the trail end of the showers. We're into the 50s and low 60s for you when you head outside this morning. I uh, do expect to see those temperatures rise into the low 90s for Bozeman. Butte seeing uh, also upper 80s with an isolated shower or thunderstorm as possible. Coming up, I'll have more on a red flag warnings that have been extended. Just a little bit, Chet. Thanks again at 636. That forecast you're talking about expected to increase fire danger today. And with three fires burning around our area, MTN's Morgan Davies looks into how resources are preparing in case these or new fires happen to flare up. I'm outside of our news station where normally we have a great view. Of the but as you can see today, they're not even visible due to the smoke. Just overnight, we have seen the Myers fire grow almost 5,000 acres. So how is the Department of Natural Resources and Conservation preparing for the severe weather ahead? Now what that amounts to is about 100 firefighters um, that are ready to respond for initial attacks around the state. Um, at times like this when we're expecting severe weather events, our number one strategy is to be um, in mode of constant communication between our area offices and our forestry division. And unfortunately, these smoky conditions are expected to continue. Reporting in Bozeman, Morgan Davies, MTN News. Now, the DNRC also says local fire departments have been essential in making initial attack efforts when new fires start up. Speaking of, let's update what's going on around the area. The Conroe fire burning seven miles northeast of Whitehall. Full suppression fire, already 60% contained. It's burned more than 2,700 acres. That fire threatens electronic sites, active mining houses, and some cattle ranches. Meantime, firefighters and helicopters are attacking a new wildfire burning just southwest of Anaconda. 20-acre fire burning near Hearst Lake, about a mile from Mount Hagen. That fire reported Monday afternoon. Officials don't know yet the cause of that blaze. Currently, eight firefighters at the scene, two helicopters dumping water on that blaze. No structures are threatened on that. Officials plan to add more resources to that fire later today. Also, the Mendenhall fire between Livingston and Big Timber is up to 30% contained. It's burned through almost 1,300 acres. Fire managers say crews are making great progress fighting that fire. And the Myers fire south of Phillipsburg grew significantly in the past two days. That fire expanded almost 5,000 acres, has now crossed further into Ravalli County due to increased winds and dry conditions. The Frog Pond area is still under an evacuation order. Moose Lake residents are under an evacuation warning. That Myers fire started back on July 14th from a lightning strike. And Sealy Swan High School students won't be hitting the books until next Tuesday. Classes canceled yesterday in Sealy after the Rice Ridge fire flared up, landing the school in the middle of a mandatory evacuation zone. Spokeswoman Hatton Littman says classes will be canceled due to the evacuation orders issued by the Missoula County Sheriff's Office. School was already set to be closed on Friday and Monday for the Labor Day holiday. Some 1,000 homes in that area under evacuation orders. Meantime, Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks says it's finding fewer dead fish in the Yellowstone River between Livingston and Springdale. State biologists say in spite of the hot weather, water temperatures in the river are stable. No closures or restrictions on fishing are being considered at this time. In spite of that, uh, FWP is asking anglers to voluntarily refrain, refrain from targeting whitefish. So far, the biologists have not been able to pinpoint a cause for the death of fish found so far. Last year, the river was closed for a while because of a large fish kill due to PKD, a kidney disease caused by a parasite. Well, MTN News has learned that the Bullock administration will announce today that it's asking state agencies to submit plans for budget cuts of 10 percent. Sources tell MTN News the plans will be submitted next week, could be implemented as soon as this year. State budget is in trouble because tax revenue is not meeting expectations because of escalating firefighting costs this summer. Any cuts apparently would be in addition to the nearly $70 million in cuts already imposed this year because tax revenue fell short of its targets back on June 30th. 
Governor Bullock has authority to cut certain budgets of up to 10% to avoid deficit spending. Any cuts beyond that amount would have to be approved by the legislature in a special session. Cuts would affect most state agencies and the university system, but not the legislature, judicial branch, or state funding for public school budgets. Cutting plans also would be reviewed by a legislative committee before they occur. Closer to home, Butte Rescue Mission hit another stag in its effort to try to find a location for its new homeless shelter this week. Mission was going to purchase a six-acre property on South Harrison Avenue where it had planned to put it a new portable shelter unit, but the deal fell through with the landowner. The agreement to purchase the land was set to go through on September 8th, but the shelter could not get approval from the zoning board until its next meeting at the end of September. Mission officials plan to continue searching for property for the shelter. Our ultimate goal is to find something in C3 so that we don't have to go before the Zoning Board of Adjustments and uh, we would be able to move things along a little bit faster. The mission's original homeless shelter on East 2nd Street was shut down earlier this year due to fire code violations. The mission wants to have the shelter in place, of course, before winter hits. And the new YMC on Baxter and Love Lane in the Bozeman area opened for business. And thanks to First Interstate Bank, they got a large chunk of change to help with that project. Yesterday, First Interstate Bank gave a $100,000 check to the Y to go towards their $6 million fund that will assist in having the facility with an active gym with multiple programs, child care for the entire community. Well, we're very proud to support the communities we serve. That's part of our value system at First Interstate Bank is to give back to the communities that we are so privileged to be in. And we know how important the Y is to the success of a community, so we are very honored to do this contribution. Now the Y will host a grand opening Saturday, September 16th from 1 to 5 o'clock. 6.42 now, we're going to take a quick break when Montana This Morning returns. We continue our look at the Montana correction system. This morning we look at the concept of a professional board of pardons. Before that, let's check in with Gail King for a preview of CBS This Morning. Good morning. Ahead on CBS This Morning, we're along the Texas-Louisiana border where Tropical Storm Harvey is making its second landfall. Plus, Nora is in Houston with the effort to improve conditions for people in overflowing shelters. And we'll take you up in a helicopter to get a view of the damage from above. We'll see you at 7 o'clock on the dot.